Amy, the only person I have heard from um, is Marie. She's not going to be able to attend. Okay. So we should still have a quorum. We just need one more person. Just one more? Yeah. Besides guy, after guy, or what's included? After guy. Okay. I don't know why, but this meeting kind of snuck up on me. It, when I got the notice, I was like, it's not already second Tuesday of November, is it? <laughs> I, October flew by. Yeah. Yeah. The time change makes us feel like a, we're meeting at midnight or something. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> it's very late. Yeah, it really does. All right, I think we have quorum. We do, yeah. Let me go ahead. Well, I'll do roll call and then I'll share screen if that works. Sounds good. Um, okay, oh. so it's 7.01 and I'm calling this meeting to order. All right, Chair Amy Wilson. Present. Bryn Dunning. Present. Scott Gilbert. Present. Sarah Harkness. Here. Guy Mason. Present. And Guy, are you able to turn on your camera? Yeah, I'm working on it. I just okay. All my backgrounds are missing, so hold on. <laughs> um, Austin Stryker. Present. And excuse, we have Marie Hoda. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill, and Library and Cultural Arts Manager Mark Mollis. Okay, so first up we have the um, approval of the minutes from October 12 when I was not there. Move to approve the minutes from October 12. They wouldn't want to second that. <laughs> I don't think I should since I wasn't there. <laughs> uh, I second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstaining or any no's? No, okay. Um, next, we have public comment. I don't believe we have anybody here um, besides not. the regular board and staff. So next up, we have reports. No reports. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, not a <laughs> yeah, not not a whole lot of anomalous stuff in the reports this month. Um, but we're seeing a nice increase in traffic still. Um, as you can see, we had almost ten thousand physical visitors last last month, which is you know as far as we can tell, post pandemic or not post pandemic, but a post post reopening uh, a high mark. Um, the uh, circulation numbers are still looking pretty solid. Uh, we're we're not filling as many holds as we were during the pandemic, but or you know, <laughs> I'm still sorry trying to figure out the language about how to describe peak versus where we're at now, since we're very very much still in it. Um, but the uh, circulation numbers uh, for physical circulation are back are, are tracking above double what they were last year. Um, total is still going to be uh, comparing to 2019 and 2018. Uh, our total physical material circulation is below where it was. Digital material circulation is um, above where it was. So we're 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 in 
we're, we're happy about that, but we're, you know, really hoping to keep seeing more and more people in the library, more and more circulation happening. Um, internet computer usage is uh, below where it was uh, prior to the pandemic, or <laughs> yeah, prior to the pandemic. Um, and that's just for whatever reason, we're not seeing all 20 computers in use at one at any given time. Um, we're noticed, I would have expected to see more return to the computers than we have. And so I'm starting to suspect that what we're seeing is um, certain patterns of behavior that changed, you know, when everything shut down, people figured out ways to get the information they need to check their emails, do that sort of stuff on their personal devices. And so I don't know if we'll ever see quite as much use of our public computers as we did previously. And that makes sense. I think on a long enough um, time scale, you know, if we think about what libraries look like 10, 20 years out, we probably won't have public PCs in the same way that we do now um, because everyone's going to have their personal devices and, and then just access gets more ubiquitous. So I find that one really interesting and we're, watch, we're watching it and we're thinking about how that might uh, affect policy. Um, what does that mean about you know, what kind of computers we offer, what software we offer, how long sessions last, et cetera, et cetera. Um, right now, I think demand is, is high enough that we feel like we're supporting what we can on that front, but it's just something that we're, we're monitoring. Um, program attendance last month was really, really solid for the children stuff. And in particular, that's thanks to um, uh, our Jamboree event on October 30th, uh, which is the Halloween event, the parade that they do. We had over 200 attendees for that. And that was a huge, huge success because that was um, a higher number than we had even at the, the highest year previously, which I think was 2017. Um, so that, that one we're really happy about. Um, and then we're seeing just steady numbers with our young adult programs and our adult programs. Yeah, we, we've got a, a lot going on that are back in the library. Uh, our writers group is picking up steam. Um, book clubs are all, are all doing healthy and our uh, French conversation circles is, has kind of evolved into our uh, our one true hybrid program. That one steadily each month has been uh, a, a combination of people attending in person and people attending virtually, which hasn't quite worked for anything else. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that we've found in the, in the niche where that is where the need is and that's where the interest is, we've been able to make it work. So any questions about any of that? You know, um, Mark, you mentioned um, the shifting usage in computers, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure you're doing this. I, I'm sure you're cautiously projecting change because um, since it's most likely to be the poorest people who need public computers, and there are programs now that keep those people with devices, but those programs could end, you know? Um, so I I, I, I I, trust that any move toward slowly getting rid of public access computers would be cautious and, and reversible, I hope. Yeah, definitely not something we're, we're looking to do um, anytime in, a, you know, in the next couple of years. I think the public computers are one of the biggest draws for the library right now and sure. still will. I just think it would be, uh, a mistake to expect that that because that's where there is still demand I bet right. it'll all be there um right. you're, you're absolutely correct about the programs that allow people to have access to um phones and tablets uh we know we have patrons who've, who've uh, gotten phones that way um but we also have people who have been trying to get personal devices so that they don't have to rely on the library's computers sure and they've really struggled to get that so oh, yeah. both, both possibilities can happen. You could have a future <laughs> where um, the uh, distribution for that sort of thing goes away and then the demand increases for the library's resources. But you could also see a future where those uh, programs um, become more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I worked with, I've worked with a lady this last month who um, has, we, we, we tracked down a, what we thought was gonna be a distribution site. We got on the phone, we talked to somebody for, for the assurance phones and um, she's visited four times and hasn't been able to find it. And she's been chasing down every lead she can get on how to try, you know, <laughs> how to get access. Um, and there's, sure. she has restrictions and that's why she hasn't been able to. But, it, you know, in a, in a scenario where she's been able to get quicker access to what she really wants, which is a personal device that provides her access to the internet, she wouldn't be coming into the library to seek that. 
So yeah. it's just something we need to, you know, think about. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I spent three hours trying to get Verizon to straighten out a billing dispute that I'm not real, <laughs> jazzed, <laughs> not real jazzed on devices right now. But yeah, um, yeah. Can, can you imagine like throwing a federal bureaucracy into the mix there too? Like, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Any other questions? I don't no. have any. All right, we can move on then to the action plan. Thanks. Cool. All right, so I wanted to provide, a, provide an update on the COVID-19 recovery situation. Um, as you can probably anticipate, many of our staff, I think maybe even no, most now have received their COVID-19 vaccine booster. So we feel well protected on that front. Um, and we're continuing, we're continuing to require masks of staff, not of visitors or patrons. Um, but this has been um, the subject of some internal debate recently. And so I did want to get, you know, talk to you all about this. Um, you know, obviously with case numbers being where they're at in Colorado um, and the situation with the scarcity of ICU beds, you know, we're, we're watching that and, and considering whether uh, policy tweaks would be appropriate. Um, the only neighboring library that I'm aware of that is currently requiring massive visitors is Jefferson County. Um, and that's because they're operating under Jefferson County's public health order, uh, which requires that. Um, but it's something that we have been, you know, I've been authorized by the city to consider uh, as an as, as uh, escalatory step if, if we see it as appropriate. Uh, I can tell you the challenge with it, if we were to require masks universally in the library again, um, is that it's very difficult for staff to enforce. Um, that given that we have multiple points of entrance into the library, um, given that people aren't generally facing a mask requirement in most places that they're visiting, um, th I think it would present certain challenges. So I did want to just kind of see what you, where you all were thinking and, and if you had any feedback for us as we kind of figure out what to do. All. My right out of the gate inclination is I would give great deference to staff's sentiment on this. I don't, I don't know whether staffers are more concerned about possible exposure to COVID or whether they're more concerned about the actual risks. I mean, I, literally physical risks of trying to enforce mask mandates. Some people get very angry about that stuff. Um, I, I don't know, where, where is the staff on this? I, I think we are still gauging that. Um, I definitely hear different opinions from different people and sometimes different opinions on different days, just depending on what our, the recency of our experience has been and, and, and exactly what you're describing, Scott, which is um, some of those occasionally uh, Anytime we have to enforce policy with the public, it, it can become contentious, and, and we certainly do have some difficult patrons. And so that that's definitely my fear as well. Um, it's a fear that I've heard voiced by some of our staff, but it's also, um, you know, I've heard them voice the concern about the potential for exposure and the fact that we know that the currently circulating variants are highly, highly infectious. I, just, I, I know I won't bring my daughter to the library now because there's so many people without masks, but I also... Um, yeah, I don't see how you can really enforce, make people wear masks when so many people aren't now. Um, yeah. I feel sorry for your st staff for having to be there, really. Yeah, I yeah. think unless they do like, you know, another public health order either in our county or statewide, like I don't, I think it'd be hard to, well, it's hard to put on your staff to have to, to mandate that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's definitely. what I was Good. thinking too. Yeah, um, with along with guys, like, you know, my personal preference would be for people to wear masks, but it, it's hard since like no other businesses or a lot of other businesses in the Inglewood area are not enforcing it. So I think it would it would be a shock to a lot of patrons too, and and just like everybody is saying, like, to make staff have to be the ones to like be the bad guy is is a big ask. I kind of, um, I agree with everyone really. I think that at this point, just strongly encouraging it is 
probably the best you can do because you don't want to put your staff in a bad position. Ultimately, I would say though, it should be up to you guys and the staff since you guys are there. I really I agree with everyone also. I think you're always gonna have a little bit of argument unless you have masks that you're able to provide, but that's something also that I don't know, we budgeted for what the costs would be. So kind of in, in the in-between like everyone else. Well, that's really helpful. Thank you all. Um, I think you're describing the perspectives that we're debating internally and um, but, I, but I think this is still really informative. Thank you. All right, I think we can go to the next item. So just our marketing update, you know, we're, we're doing uh, outreach. We've um, had a, uh, our uh, adult services librarian, Michelle Brands, that are, uh, visited the Greater Anglo Chamber of Commerce meeting. Um, uh, nice thing is Rooted 303 provides services that are aligned with a lot of what we're, we've been doing. So it was kind of uh, beneficial in multiple ways to, to attend that one. And I, as I mentioned at our last meeting, the library conducted a, a staff in service day on October 11th. Um, and we do, we've, we've continued to uh, feel the benefits of having conducted that training. I uh, definitely feel like we've had some situations, uh, particularly those involving patrons experiencing mental health challenges that were informed by the uh, conversations that we had with All Health Network in particular on that day. And we've been uh, able to, um, in certain circumstances, bring in uh, the police with the co-responder to help connect patrons experiencing mental health challenges inside the library to resources that are appropriate. And so rather than just managing the behavior, just getting that person out of the library, we've actually been able to take otherwise challenging situations and, and turn it into positive outcomes for the library and that we bring the situations back under control and also the people who are experiencing those challenges. So that, that's something that I directly attribute to uh, taking the time to do an in-service training day. So I, I appreciate that we've had the flexibility to do that. That's great. Um, as I have mentioned before, our partnership with the Arapahoe County Community Development Housing Resource Navigators um, got off to a good start, um, but we were concerned we were creating some confusion around having resource providers in the library on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and Fridays, and call, all kind of doing overlapping but slightly differently branded things. Um, and so uh, we had the idea um, uh, of, of combining those into a single weekly event. Um, so Mondays, 9.30 to 12.30, we have various uh, resource providers who do uh, parallel but slightly different things um, all on, on site in a meeting room working together. And so when, uh, when people are coming in, they're able to talk to the people who uh, can help them figure out uh, financial assistance, housing, shelter, um, whether, you know, whatever their uh, job opportunities, that sort of thing. Um, and so that way it's 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 able to help the person's entire you know situation not just one fragmentary aspect of it um so we think that's off to a good start um it, we could, we're calling it resource connect and i'll definitely keep you keep in the loop in the months to come about how that's working out i think that's a good idea because i like i work for human services and my husband's in the same industry and like it's really hard to keep straight which days are what and if you have a bunch of days it's harder so yeah i think it's a great idea cool Yeah, so we're still working on that uh, Englewood history nook. Um, we got uh, Lindsay Runyon from uh, the Englewood Historic Preservation Society is kind of our, our, our contact graphic designer on that one, and she's she's working with others. Um, so that's that's still a work in progress. We're hoping to have uh, more to update on that in the next month or two. All right, you'll probably hear me beat this drum. If you've heard it already, you'll hear it again. Um, continued training of new staff members and interviews and hiring. And um, this used to be 
once a year we would be like, oh, somebody's leaving and we're going to have a, there's going to be a new person here at the library. What a, what a strange experience. And, and now it's just constant. Um, and so uh, as, 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 as with everyone else, you know, it's, it's the challenge to, to retain, hire, train staff right now. Um, fortunately, I think everyone we're bringing in, I feel really excited about. It's just happening faster than we used to. Um, so that's something that I, I think we're going to keep navigating for a while yet. Um, we did consolidate our language learning materials. So materials for learning foreign languages, as well as materials for learning English um, into a world languages collection. Um, and that's going to be kind of in the uh, back of the library near where, or right where the Colorado history collection used to be before we moved it over to the Inglewood History Nook. Um, and part of the thought there is that those materials are um, not traditional nonfiction materials in that it's a mix of books and CDs and playaways and sort of training materials. And so pulling them out of the nonfiction collection makes them easier to find, um, helps make everything make more sense from where they'd otherwise be kind of scattered around the Dewey Decimal System and just gives us a chance to brand it a little bit. Um, so we got that. We uh, the art mural near the fiction section has been completed. Um, we've we've ordered, we've received and are uh, uh, cataloging additional video games for the video games collection. That's doing very well, um, and it's doing very well without allowing exterior holds, uh, external holds. If we turned it, if we flag those materials the same way we do everything else in the collection, where it's possible for them to be sent off site to be borrowed elsewhere, we'd be at 100% checkout on those. Um, I kind of prefer that we're not. I'd rather have something on hand for people who come to visit. Um, and then uh, we are doing sort of a redesign of our graphic novels collection where we're just kind of uh, displaying it a little differently. We're, we're doing a big purchase as we get toward the end of the year here. Of, um, of graphic novels, just, just gaps in our collection. You know, we're starting to put together this display where, okay, all the you know, Avengers books are gonna go here and all the Wonder Woman books are gonna go here. And we've got two Superman books. How do we only have two Superman books? So it's, it's been, you know, stuff like that. So, um, which is kind of fun. We have a couple of good uh, comic book nerds on staff who are having a great time with that. Could I, could I ask something on the uh, hiring and, and turnover? Um, the, I remember a few years ago when the library is a budgetary move and in a very different time when, when there wasn't so much churn and staffing shortages, the library went from largely benefited full-time positions to, to transitioning toward uh, part-time non-benefited positions. Is that still where most of the hiring is, is, uh, is non-benefited? Uh, almost exclusively, yeah. Is that a challenge um, to try to, do, do, do people bring that up? Um, it does come up, yeah. Um, it, it, we, when we look at the hiring competition, um, we generally feel like our pay is, is very competitive um, compared to neighboring libraries, but it's true that we don't have benefits and for part-time positions and, and some of our you know, competing libraries, whatever that means. Um, do. Um, so that's, it's, it's a challenge, but that's not something that's within the control of the library. Okay. Yeah. Um, still working on uh, upgrades to the teen, to the teen room. Um, going to mount this, going to mount the projector in there to the ceiling and Still going to get some PCs as soon as we're able to. Um, and then the young adult collection used to be where the DVDs are. And if you recall, that's that's not the best lit part of the library. Um, so when we went with the electrician this month, we requested additional lighting above there to try to brighten that whole spot up a little bit. And I think that'll look nice when we have it. Um, yeah, so then this one about um, the educational enrichment take home kits, I'll um, describe that more in the next section when we uh, talk about the library board's remaining funds and a couple of staff requests related to those funds. Okay, um, so the children's team updates here, like I said before, the Jamboree program was really, really successful. Um, a lot of uh, children's staff, all, uh, Kimberly in particular, also uh, participated in the trunk or treat event. Um, so hopefully some of you got to come out to that. That was, that was a big hit. 
We've added um, Wonder Books and Launch Pads, which are the, those uh, sort of multimedia devices to the children's collection. Uh, the Fall Festival had 40 plus kids in attendance, also a huge hit. And we're resuming outreach programs to uh, some of the area preschools. Um, so I feel uh, like children's services are, are really just in a very successful, vibrant place right now. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where we're at, you know, as, as our families have been hesitant to return also come back because like if we're already breaking records. I think we've got good, you know, good, good potential for the future. All right, any questions about any of that or additional comments? All right, what do we got I, next? Actually, I, I, I would just ask if, if the library did want to change the, uh, the compensation for librarians, librarian associates, that would have to come up at the beginning of the budget process for a year, right? Like, um, like when does that start, summer or something? That starts in March. Jeez, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm not sure that we could change the compensation for that class of part-time employees only. There's other part-time employees in the city, and I, I, I don't know if that would how that would work. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I just saw recently like Public Works had to really make some changes because they couldn't uh, keep custodial staff yeah. at the city's <laughs> wage, and so I wonder if. Uh, you know, if it is something to maybe um, to maybe look at making a request to the city to uh, so that you're not constantly having to hire and just to reflect the realities of the market now. Um, well, we, I think we are experiencing something similar to what other departments are experiencing. So I think oh, yeah. looking at it at the level of the whole city would, would, would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, new business. Is there anything? No? I guess. <laughs> I know everyone's, ex everyone's excited about old business. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, there are some new ideas <laughs> doing the old business section. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just move to old business then. Okay. All right. So the library board, uh, the, the remaining funds of $1,300, we, we had a couple of proposals um, and then and, and these two come from Kimberly. Um, the first is for uh, a teen art display. Um, so specifically when you walk into the library right outside the teen room there um, is a, a gallery window or a display window. Um, what the uh, children's services the teens the specialists in particular want to do is as print and display the art from three of our teens in the south display case there um the art would be on display for six months and then we'll give the pieces the the, 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 the sorry we'll give the teens the pieces to keep so after it's been on display for six months they would get it um so their their cost estimates here um would be uh the printing the art um, onto a foam board um, would be about $35 per piece, seven pieces, so about $280. Um, and they'd need some display supplies like easels, the artist bios, the little name cards for them. They estimate about $20 on that. And so they're asking for uh, $300 total uh, for that uh, for that little, little project. Um, do you want to discuss that or do you want to describe the other one? Let's hear them both, I think. Oh, all right, sounds good. So the next one is um, what they're describing as homeschool kits for checkout or uh, thinking of them more as like just educational enrichment kits. We could figure out how to brand it. Um, but the thing about putting together five or six kits that families can check out to supplement uh, at home learning. Um, so a couple around science would be something like a, a telescope plus book on identifying constellations or general information about planets, et cetera. And so when you're, visualizing this picture of those story time bins the story time bins that you can check out they've got toys in there and they've got themed books and they've got manip manipulables and, and that sort of thing um another science one would be a microscope plus the slides of various organisms books on using the microscope project ideas that sort of thing 
uh, art one with a digital camera plus guidebooks for taking and editing pictures. Um, a music kit with a ukulele and a tuner and an introductory instruction books and maybe some other simple instruments in there. Uh, a technology kit with a, um, a robotics kit, book, a book on robotics, list of free apps that can be used to learn basic coding, that sort of thing. Uh, engineering kit with building sets like, cop, like Keva planks, um, plus architecture and engineering books and, and building challenge slash project books. So they're estimating that each book or sorry, each box would be um, about $100 each worth of materials. Um, so if we did six kits, that'd be about $600. And then we'd need a little bit extra for the bins themselves. So about $100. And so the total request for that project would be $700. Um, so combine those two and they're looking at about um, $1,000 for the projects that they've requested. Well, sound cool. Mm -hmm. I like that uh, the education thing too, because like not just homeschool kids might want to check that out. Like, I don't know, I might want to check that out. It sounds yeah, <laughs> that's why that's why in my head I've been thinking educational enrichment because it's like yeah, I mean it's 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 it supports homeschool uh, the homeschool families I, I think in a direct way, but it certainly wouldn't be limited to that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like both of those ideas a lot. I would definitely support both of them. I would as well. Totally on board with both. For, for the remaining $300, do you have other ideas or should we just add $300 to the project or what? I was thinking um, to give some money for an end of year staff breakfast. Ooh, maybe I that like could that. be, maybe we could use that. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, the bottomless mimosa breakfast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm really on board. <laughs> yeah. All 300 no, but... has to be spent on mimosas, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably against policy <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would agree, though. I mean, seriously, like um, the, a staff meal and breakfast is always nice. I, I would agree that would be great. Just an appreciation kind of gesture. Or is it like, I don't know, is there more staff there in the morning versus lunchtime shifts versus afternoon shifts? Like, you know, whatever works best, obviously for staff, you know, get the most staff point. in there at, at one time. Um, that, is, that some, that, is that cool with you, Mark? I think it's great. I, I think if you um, could vote on it in such a way that it's, uh, especially if you're talking about the last $300, generic enough that we could give the, uh, what I'd really like to do is give the supervisory staff some flexibility to figure out what would be of most value to the to staff, like what kind of celebration they would really appreciate. Um, so whether it's a breakfast uh, or a lunch, you know, just a little bit of flexibility on that. Um, but otherwise, I, I really think that sounds wonderful. Okay. Should we vote on these three things separately, probably? Or does it matter? I think I can combine it. Want me to just combine, combine, it? combine it? Okay, so we, we approve the, um, was it, or we, we have to vote on it, but the motion that I'm making is for $300 to be spent on um, the art project, um, the $700 to be spent on the educational enrichment program, and then $300 for staff appreciation to be used at you and your supervisor's discretion. That's the motion. Second. Yeah. All right, all in favor? And just uh, that Sarah. Uh, oh, Sarah, were you the one who seconded? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone against? Okay, the motion passes. Well, thank you all very, very much. I think that's gonna be wonderful news. I can't wait to share it with everybody. Yeah, well, thank you. That's, those are some really great ideas. And also your staff has been working so hard with COVID and it's just re really hard to imagine being in that circumstance. So good job to them. That means a lot to say. And they, you too. <laughs> they, yeah, not, not as much, they, they've really been on the front lines of it. So thank and, you. And I, yeah, I really appreciate even just like, 
the specific asks that your staff is making like hey this is what we need for this project like and I think even going into like next year's like budget like when things like that pop up over the year like you know we have this much money sitting here at the end of the year so you know I would encourage your staff to like continue to think outside the box on you know ways we can best serve like library patrons and if that requires money then I would say ask awesome yeah thank you I like that All right, um, so that brings us to future library capital projects. So this is your monthly reminder to be thinking of capital projects. Um, like I said, the budget season starts late February, early March um, for 2023. And uh, we have a decent list going, something that's been rising to the top um, that uh, Mark and I have been working together with our legal team and city manager's office is safety in the library. And we recently had an audit done on the safety of the Civic Center campus, the library and other facilities throughout um, Inglewood uh, that the city owns along with parks too. And so it is very possible that some of the safety items that the librarians and staff and Mark have had over this last year and, and even before that uh, may need to be addressed through capital projects. So. Um, we'll kind of clean up the list that we've we've gathered from you over the last um, months and add some of the safety elements to it as well that may come up. Um, there's things like uh, we have a security guard in courts and a security guard in the library. Um, the only metal detector that exists that people walk through is in courts and a lot of cities, especially city halls, um, have metal detectors with guards as you enter their facility. So um, not that we would uh, fund the whole civic center, but maybe for the library or uh, something of that, just to make the library a little safer. We get a lot of different uh, types of traffic through the library on a daily basis. And so um, we'll, we'll analyze the uh, audit that was done and see what pops up on that. So we'll be adding to that. But my goal is in January and February to bring this list to you with cost estimates. And then um, come March, when the call comes in for all capital project submissions, we'll be ready to submit with uh, your all's blessing on the capital projects for the library. So still be thinking of things. It's not too late to add anything on that you may see at other libraries or have ideas about. So you can always send an email if you uh, come up with something or wait to the next meeting and bring it up. Great. Any questions or comments about that? I think that's a good direction to go in. I mean, I definitely feel less safe in Inglewood, like in that city center area than I probably ever have the whole time I've lived in Inglewood. Yeah. Um, and I've also was talking to a mom the other day and she's like, oh, I used to go to the library all the time and I just don't feel safe there anymore, which is kind of sad, like that it's, but it, I mean, it's reality. So I think that's a really good use of funds. I, I hear Probably that. Probably very necessary. I, I hear that from people as well. It's uh, it's it's definitely a bummer, but it's it's out there. It's it's how people feel, and it's not uh, and it's not based on nothing. Too bad that there's so many vacant like storefronts around there. Because I think if there was more storefronts, there would be less. Like nobody's there, right? Like it's just totally agree. Empty. Other than the few people walking to the library and the people that live there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you nailed that. I hope the redevelopment happens. That's yeah. what I should. <laughs> yeah, it me really too. needs to happen. So the good news on that is that bond passed in this last election. And so that activates funding for redevelopment <laughs> much sooner than um, anybody was truly anticipating. So um, we're kind of, I, I had a conversation with the city manager on Friday and a comment he made, and this is not concrete by any means, but it is possible the library may stay in its current location. And that being said, we know what we're working with then as far as a facility is concerned and changes that may need to be made to make the library a safer place. Um, we know we've had increased in a uh, homeless popula population, especially at the Civic Center area. Um, in the time I've been 
working for Inglewood, so almost two years in January, I've seen a change, like you've all experienced and mentioned. There's definitely been a change in the clientele of the area. And so redevelopment probably can't happen soon enough. There's also funding coming from the state, the governor's office, Inglewood's committed to, uh, to funding um, to help with our homeless individuals that are experiencing homelessness, to help find them the resources. And um, the library is doing a great job of already bringing a lot of those resources in, but it's a matter of getting to those people and getting them to come in and say, hey, we can help you. Uh, no matter what it is, we can help you. So there's a lot of things in motion right now. It's just probably never fast enough for anyone. And that's always, I think the history of everywhere is that's always the challenge is um, we can't address things fast enough. But the good news is there's a light at the end of the tunnel of things are gonna happen. And, um, and being able to address that sooner than later is extremely important, so. Amy, Amy has dropped off. Dude, they got very quiet. Yeah. Um, let's just move to staff's choice then. Mark, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I was just going to bring up uh, this, the question about the December meeting. Oh, yes. Go ahead. So, but it might be better if, if Amy were present yeah. for that. <laughs> okay, then I'll give a quick update. Um, uh, we have Holiday Express happening the first two uh, Friday and Saturdays in December. Uh, tickets are going quickly, so if you are interested and haven't got your tickets yet, please do that. And that's down at Bellevue Park at the Farm and Train. And then on uh, Saturday, December 4th, we have uh, the tree lighting uh, and market celebration going on at the uh, Civic Center campus where that uh, Circle Drive is and we'll be lighting the tree at 5 p.m. However, the event runs from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And um, there's gonna be vendors selling different goods. So you can do some holiday shopping. We'll have some food vendors as well. And uh, we partnered with the high schools. They're gonna bring out some of their drama kids to have elves and other uh, holiday themed uh, characters running around and entertaining people. So it should be a really nice event. Um, and again, that's on Saturday, December 4th. And Amy, we were waiting for you to come back on. So I'm going to give it back to Mark uh, to discuss the, the December meeting. Thanks. Sorry about that. I, my, my computer kicks me off my modem at so I'm the 38 of every hour and I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's Very hilarious. Very frustrating. Oh, All day long. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's somebody you, you would make somebody's day by presenting that puzzle to the right kind of nerd. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just know Comcast isn't gonna care. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so I, I, I guess my understanding from uh, talking to Christina earlier is that the uh the recreation board decided not to do um a December meeting. Um and so that's uh, something that you all can decide. Um might, might be worth discussing. Um, I can tell you, uh, we, it's, it's unlikely we'll have anything too significant to update on for that meeting. Um, we do uh, need to discuss the 2022 action plan and kind of refine that based on your feedback. But uh, at the, 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 that can wait till the January meeting, if you'd like, because the January meeting, uh, we'd be discussing, you know, December 2021 statistics and action plan updates. And so the first meeting at which we discussed Jan uh, the 2022 action plan would, of course, be the February meeting. Um, so we just wanted to present that uh, as, as an option for all of you. Well, if, if the uh, holiday thing is on the 4th and that's a Saturday, that would mean the second Tuesday would be December 14th, right? Um, yeah. If, yeah, that's pretty hard up against most people's holiday plans. It won't keep me from going and getting the turkey, Franks, at uh, 7-Eleven, but uh, most people <laughs> are, are, most people are much more serious about it. I, I would be fine with skipping the, uh, the December meeting and resuming in January, but that's, that's one person's opinion. I would be too, man. We, you know, we've, um, we haven't had to like skip a meeting because of missing quorum or anything in like a long time. So I think that we're all doing a great job and could use a month off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I I wouldn't be opposed to that either. And I also think it might even benefit us because I think we potentially in February would have new members. And so for them to like jump into that meeting and hopefully be able to contribute to the action plan might be a good um, positive thing. Do So do we need to like vote on that or does anyone know? You can just to make it official. That way nobody questions it. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll make a motion to skip the December meeting and we'll meet at a regular time in January. I'll second that. All right, everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? No, okay, so that passes. So Amy, the uh, other piece of this is uh, January's meeting. Do you wanna continue on Zoom or do you wanna meet in person in January? I think at this point we need to say Zoom. Okay. Just cause the numbers. Do you think we need to vote on that too? No, that's just, I think so everybody understands. Uh, we'll stay on Zoom and then you can, we'll see where things are at in January and decide on the February meeting then on where we want to meet. We'd love to get you all in the library at some point uh, to give a tour and an update, but totally get it. COVID numbers are increasing. Um, one interesting fact, just a side note, uh, the, the uh, treatment plant in Inglewood has biobots and those are tracking COVID numbers. And our biobots are showing that we have a 20% higher rate of COVID in um, the water that's being treated, which is coming from South Denver, Littleton, Inglewood, um, than actual numbers being reported through uh, like Tri-County Health or things that you would see if you did a COVID uh, cases by county or by state. And so it's, it's just interesting data. I think with people getting vaccines, maybe less are getting tested if they're not feeling well, but it is showing there's an increase in COVID numbers. So we'll keep an eye on that. And if there's any concerns, we'll definitely share it with y'all. That's freaky and I'm not sure I'm glad I know that, but thanks. it's interesting yeah. data. <laughs> it is, that's true. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even think about how there were such a thing. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I think Arizona State University started it when they were tracking the uh, opiate pandemic, the issues we were having in the state of Arizona, and they were able to um, really get a true case number of how what the opioid use looked like um, in the Phoenix metropolitan area, and then it's expanded now to COVID, and I think it's super cool. They do a lot of tracking through biobots. I'm kind of nerdy when it comes to biobots. I think it's really cool information because they're testing wastewater. I'm like, how gross, but really cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, all right. So was that staff's choice that we were on? That was the part that I missed. Correct. Oh, okay. Uh, so board members choice. Does anyone have anything they would like to add? Hope everybody has a oh go on. <laughs> I'm excited to hear about the holiday events. The day after yeah. Halloween, my daughter came out of her room and she said, Mom, 58 days till Christmas. <laughs> then she decorated her room she has a christmas tree in her room so nice. Cute. nice. We'll, we'll be at the holiday events for sure <laughs> yeah um mark i just wanted to throw a resource your way um there is a nonprofit that's called cross purpose um but they i think they actually have like a new storefront in inglewood but that's not on their website yet but anyways they um or like a training program for people who are unemployed or underemployed. Um, cool. And yeah, it just seems like maybe a, a potential resource for any patrons that are like needing vocation um, help or even like training. They like do a lot of one-on-one -on -one and like group-based training, so. Yeah, okay, just just found it. Yeah, and it looks like they're working with Wellspring. Awesome, okay, thank you, Bryn. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 I'm sure we'll be in touch with them. Is that it? I was just going to say happy holidays, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Yeah, happy holidays to you, too. All right. Well, it is 748, and I we will adjourn this meeting. Okay. Well, take care. See you all in January. All right. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. Bye.